Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today to talk about Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. So this is a book that has gotten a lot of attention, largely praise here on booktube and uh, yeah, pretty much booktube. I haven't really seen anyone talk about it on bookstagram or anywhere else, <laughs> but I have seen this talked a lot, uh, talked about a lot on booktube. And again, largely I have seen praise. People, I, I literally, well, that's not exactly true. I have seen a couple people with dissenting opinions. There are people who I, my tastes do not align like very consistently with theirs. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So anyway, all of that to say, having heard all of that hype and praise, I had to know for myself what I would think of this book. And it's a chunky, floppy adult fantasy <laughs> that I, uh, I have really, really mixed feelings about. But this isn't a rant review. This isn't one of those like, I don't get it, like one star, everybody loves it, I hate it. It is not that. There's a lot that I kind of hate about this book, but I don't hate the book. I gave it three stars because it was like a, to me, even though three is technically like, you can't have a straight down the line review system when it's five stars. Like it's either going to be anyway. <laughs> like, but three was like right down the middle for me. I was like, it's, I, I don't, I don't love it. I definitely do not love it, but I, I don't hate it. I have very mixed feelings about it, extremely mixed feelings about it. So this is going to be a non-spoiler review. Um, and I'm just going to kind of go over <laughs> my extremely mixed feelings about this. And it's kind of heavy and chunky, so I'm going to put it down. Okay, so the book itself uh, is an African inspired fantasy. As far as I'm aware, to my knowledge, it's not inspired by any particular historical place, event, people, nation, culture, anything like that, but its tone, its aesthetic, its naming conventions um, are very inspired by various African cultures and African languages, and that's the vibe of it. Again, not being a, an expert on that part of the world myself, um, it may be drawing specific references from specific languages in the naming and at specific cult, uh, historical events. To my knowledge, that is not going on here and I have not seen anyone else say that that's going on here. So again, as far as I know, that's not happening. It's just kind of vaguely African-ish. <laughs> I might be wrong about that, but I don't think so. I don't think it's specific to anything. So that is refreshing to see a non-European, non-medieval Europe setting and inspiration for a fantasy, uh, for an adult fantasy in particular, is it's always going to catch my eye. It's always going to spark my interest because it's, you know, like I, I love medieval fantasy, like Abercrombie is my all time favorite. So like, it's not like I'm not going to read that stuff, but it's refreshing to see not that. So it caught my eye. Again, saw nothing but praise. So caught my attention. And the blurb, the sort of like the pitch is uh, Game of Thrones meets Gladiator. And I love Game of Thrones and I love Gladiator. So I was like, great. <laughs> Uh, an African-inspired fantasy that's Game of Thrones meets Gladiator. Sign me the fuck up. I don't understand either of those comparisons. I kind of get Gladiator, but not really, because I feel like the strengths of Gladiator are entirely missing here. Like, it's only the vaguest, barest trappings of Gladiator that are present here to make that comparison. Like, I, I get why that comparison was made, but when I think of Gladiator, those are not the parts of Gladiator that I think of that are present here. So, the premise of the book is, it's kind of hard to put give you a concise synopsis blurb but it is ultimately at its core a revenge story which again is a really compelling kind of a plot to have it's a really easy way to gain your audience's sympathy and interest a revenge plot like Count of Monte Cristo like most audiences will even if you're kind of being manipulated into it like everybody can get on board with like they something was taken from you so let's get revenge like sure but that's kind of I mean, well, a gladiator is actually a revenge story as well, which again, like, I think is kind of why the revenge part of it and the fact that there are hand, like, there is, like, competitive fighting in a, an arena, to, not even in an arena, but in, like, a, like, people are watching competitive fighting. Gladiator. <sighs> okay, this is getting rambling, but I really, I just, it's, a, it's a tough one to, to explain because, like, what's going on, the plot itself, the plot is so basic, it's so simple. It's literally just that. Our main character is on a mission to get revenge uh, and to get to kill the people he holds responsible for his father's death. That is the entire plot. That's it. And so for that reason, that's one of the main reasons that I don't really like this book, that like I borderline hate it. Because it's so boring. <laughs> like the fact that once you strip away all the fantasy trappings and all the explanations of the lore and the explanations of the, the magic system, 
when you strip all that away, that's it. <laughs> That's literally it. That's the entire plot. So it's it's really boring. And since that's the whole plot, you wonder like, how did you fill all these pages? Well, you filled all these pages with one, tons of info dumps about the magic system and info dumps about the history and info dumps about the like caste system that is like the social structure here. Just so much info dumping about that. So that's a big chunk of it. And then the rest of it is just pages and pages and pages and pages of training montages and fighting and battles. Like the amount of battling, the amount of, of action scenes in this book is kind of absurd. It's nuts. It's every page it feels like. I know it can't be every page, but it feels like every page. It's almost like it's, it's kind of like Rise of Skywalker. It's nowhere near as shitty as Rise of Skywalker. But the way that Rise of Skywalker just keeps throwing action at you, like constantly, hoping you won't notice that the plot makes no fucking sense. So this isn't, the, the case isn't here that the plot doesn't make sense. It's just there isn't much of a plot. And it keeps throwing action at you like it's gonna it's hoping it's gonna trick you into thinking that that is a plot and that's not a plot <laughs> that's just a bunch of action which after a while really really gets old because the thing that makes an action scene interesting is your investment in how this is moving the plot forward so if this is like a, a situation that uh, the main character like there's really high stakes here like whether you win or lose this situation right here in terms of what the what you stand to gain or lose based on the outcome that's what gets you involved not the cool maneuver like the cool maneuver may be cool a little bit and it might and it's definitely way cooler on screen if you're watching someone do it but in a book you're like okay like that's cool and all but like like okay i get it they're fighting a lot like i get it move on i get it move on so to me what i love about gladiator well not i shouldn't say the only thing i do love the the action set pieces in gladiator it's a beautiful film but Gladiator is more complex. The political machinations and the fact that you see from the, the villain's point of view, the political side there, the, the history and the, the politics that are involved in Gladiator are a lot more complex. Even Gladiator isn't all that, like I don't really think of Gladiator as being an extremely complex story, but compared to Rage of Dragons, it is. Gladiator has a lot more nuance and a lot more layers to the story. And one of the things that I absolutely love, and I think that that really gets the audience to, that allows Maximus to gain the audience's sympathy is one, it's a revenge story. So yes, most people are going to be on board as soon as like something horrible is done to you or taken from you in the beginning. We're like, we're with you to see you get your vengeance as an audience. So when Maximus, slight spoilers for Gladiator, but it's the beginning of the movie, when Maximus's family is killed and his title and his lands and his property are taken from him, like, yeah, everybody sees that and you're like, fuck <laughs> you gotta get them back and comet is played by uh joaquin phoenix it's just so disgustingly weaselly and like he plays it so well but he's so easy to hate but maximus isn't i feel like he would lose the audience's sympathy very quickly if maximus was just like i hate you and i'm gonna kill you and every single time he comes across comet if every single time like he just like had a r complete rage and just like beyond like without logic or reason just went and attacked Commodus without thinking about it then I don't think we would like Maximus very much and that is exactly what the main character in Rage of Dragons is like the people he holds responsible for the death of his father if he he is completely single-mindedly going to get revenge on them there is no like complexity there's no long game other people try to talk him out of this not even talk him out of getting revenge but talk him out of like an immediate moment like he sees an opportunity that's literally just like it's animalistic like the person is physically in their presence and he's gonna go attack them like it doesn't make sense to do it it might hurt other people there might be a better move here you might be able to get a better revenge like if you like wait a little bit and like pick your opportune moment nope our main character is just like sees them gonna kill him gonna kill him gonna kill him gonna kill him and it's like i've seen people complain the people that ha do that have complained about this book that the main character is kind of dumb and going into it having heard that criticism i expected something a la kvothe from the king killer chronicle because kvothe makes some really dumb decisions like really really dumb decisions but kvothe is an interesting character and kvothe still does have kind of there's a lot of layers to what's going on with kvothe and yes his long game is getting revenge and fight on the people who killed his parents like it's literally the same thing kvothe's parents are killed and he wants to go and get revenge on the the creatures that he that are responsible for his family's death but at the same time like Kvothe is doing other things <laughs> there's more to Kvothe there's other goals he has there's other motivations he has like he makes really dumb dumb decisions and he's got like such a huge ego that really gets him into trouble but he's an interesting character to follow for that reason because he's got a lot going on 
and it's not literally just this one thing with him. It's a lot, that thing. Don't get me wrong, it is. That's his entire reason for going to the university, because he wants to find books on the Chandrian, which are responsible for killing his family. But he's also there to learn other things and to He's interested in music and he's interested in Dana and he has his friends and like there's other stuff going on. In Rage of Dragons there's tons of like little moments where like I thought we would get more because he he's part of this like fighting group that he gets involved with and they're the ones that are competing together. Kind of like uh, Maximus in Gladiator is part of this like gladiatorial academy thing so they fight together. So like there's like a train their group that he that our main character in Rage of Dragons trains with but there's never like Considering how many pages are devoted to training montages and fighting, there isn't actually any kind of like a camaraderie built. Like you don't really get to know these characters as like his like fellow brothers in arms. Like you know, it's literally just our main character being in his head, being like, fight, 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 get better, get better, fight, 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 get better, get better, get stronger, get faster, get more badass so that I can kill, 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 kill. That's it. He's like boring. It's not so much that he's dumb. He's just boring, boring as shit. Because that's all that's going on with him. And there's like a small romance subplot, which honestly was nauseating to me. Because the way that it's written, I feel like Evan Winter doesn't know women. Because <laughs> the female who's in love with uh she's a plot device. And I really hated the treatment of her character. And and even she comes into it occasionally to be like telling our main character that like you need to listen to what I have to tell you about the the bigger political situation here. Like, I know you're all about revenge. For your father's death but like there's some stuff you don't know there's more to this like it wasn't literally just like person killed father person who killed father must die like there's bigger things here there's more things that led up to your father's death there's more people involved like it's not that cut and dry and he has no he will not listen to it he does not give a shit other people try to tell him this he does not listen he doesn't give a shit and again when people i've heard people complain that the main character is dumb that's not dumb to me it's boring and narrow-minded which to me is, it's an, it's nitpicky, but it, there's a subtle difference there. Like if he was on his own, too dumb to piece together that there's more at play, that's being dumb. The fact that other people are telling him this stuff, being like, look, I'm literally going to tell you right now this other stuff at play. La 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 la. Don't care. Gotta kill him. Gotta kill him. Gotta kill him. Don't care. That's not dumb. <laughs> that's narrow-minded and stubborn and boring. Because he's not an interesting character to follow. Yes, there's human beings in history and in real life who are that narrow-minded and that stupid and that stubborn. But I don't want to follow those people because people like that are boring and obnoxious and unsympathetic. So I would really prefer it if, if, if at the beginning his entire goal was like, I'm just going to kill the guy. I'm going to get good enough and I'm going to kill the guy that killed my dad. And that if along the way he starts piecing together that like there's more to this, there's more layers here perhaps like who who I considered to be my enemy it might be bigger or more complicated than that if we watched him slowly alter his plan and alter his strategy and kind of become more aware of what all is at play that would be so much more interesting to follow but instead it's just fight 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 train 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 get stronger get faster get more badass people are like there's more going on he's like shut up I'm training <laughs> it's like 500 pages of that and like the world and the magic system which I haven't even talked about at all we're, when I started the book, when I first started the book, it just kind of like dumps you in. And there's like, so it, it actually, the, the book opens like years and years before the main events of the book. So it's giving you some backstory on like the the political pieces at play and the, the, the sides, like our main characters, people versus the, the, the people they're fighting against to give you some context and to kind of get you introduced into this magic system and how it's applied in a, in a combat setting. And the, because the book just kind of dumps you in and it's this kind of like chaotic battle and there's like the magic is being kind of like a little bit explained, but mainly just kind of like it's being shown to you. And then there's a dragon. And like the beginning, I was just like, oh, there's so much here to discover. Like there's so many different like pieces to the society and the case here. And what does all this mean? And the way the magic works, like, oh, I don't quite understand. I know I'm not meant to, but like, that seems interesting. And the dragon, like, oh, that's badass as fuck. And like, oh, and the battle was really gritty and violent and bloody and visceral. And I was like, oh, I am into this. Like, I think I'm gonna like this. And then we skip ahead all these years. And now we and we're introduced to our main character who was very young. And in the beginning he, he was, because he's not really doing anything yet. It's not about the revenge yet. It's kind of just getting to know him. And I was like, hey, okay, he's like, you know, your average fantasy protagonist, like, he's kind of got doubts about his future, but, you know, he's training and just generally part of his society, kind of has a crush on a girl, like, you know, your average, it's, I don't love it or hate it, like, he was like, he's fine. 
and I'm slowly learning about the world. And then as soon as it becomes the revenge story, like we get info dumps about the magic system as it becomes relevant to the revenge story and it gets real info dumpy. It's no longer the sort of dumping you into the world, which is I, per I prefer getting dumped into a world and starting to piece it together myself. No, it's just constantly info dumping things at you. And the magic system again is unique and a little bit, it's a little messy in terms of how complicated it is sometimes in explaining it where you're just like that, it isn't that neatly done if that makes sense. There's just like, like it, it seems cool, but I feel like there's some very obvious flaws to the magic system that I, I'm not here to like analyze and, and discuss and debate and pick apart the magic system. I think overall it's a cool magic system. I just think it's, it's a little, messy but overall i think it's it's unique and cool it's to do with like a demon other world and about who has access to like manipulating the magic that comes from there and there's demons there and then this magic is tied to being able to control dragons and like how that is all achieved like it's it's nuanced and complex and again like i have a couple issues with it but like overall it's a pretty interesting magic system but because our main character is just like can i use it to fight that's his only like that's the only thing he's thinking about and anytime other characters around like every other character that we barely even got introduced to a little bit and not enough so i would have preferred to spend a little more time with other characters not just tau did i even tell you his name is tau that i uh even those other characters seemed more nuanced and layered and complex and i was like they seem more interesting and when they interact with tau it drives me nuts when they're when they when it, this narrative started doing the thing once he starts gaining around once he starts getting badass and people are just like wow you're just the most badass ever he suddenly starts gaining accolades and followers and people who are like doing things for him and being impressed with him and it was very wish fulfillment -y. that was getting annoying because he gets to be kind of a mary sue yes he was training but the training is, we didn't really get to see him struggle with training. It was really just every time he was told that he needs to try harder or any time like he didn't actually win the fight, it was like, well, I got to train harder. I got to train harder, train more, train harder. And then we get to watch him train more and train harder, train harder, train more, train harder, train more, train more, train harder. That's it. And that to me is not interesting. <laughs> Watching somebody struggle with like the limits of their own physical body, the, their mental, like the mental strain, like other characters pay lip service to it. They're like, what are you doing? Like, you're crazy. Like, you're gonna, you're gonna push yourself too far. And he's just like, nope, gonna keep going. And I really wanted the narrative to punish him for it. I really wanted him to get pushed too far and really see the consequences of it. But it doesn't really happen. He just kind of keeps getting stronger until everyone's just like, wow, like he's just like the most badass because he just keeps training and training and training and training until he's just like the most badass. And kind of stuff that he's figured out because he's is kind of dumb. It seems unbelievable to me that he'd be the first person to figure this out. But I guess, <laughs> all right, whatever. I just, he was so boring and single-minded that it really got old to read about it. I was like, I, okay, I get it. This is your plan for revenge. Like, I get it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Keep training, I guess. Get him. <laughs> and then towards the end of the book, this isn't really a spoiler because it's a revenge story. The whole thing is fucking building up to this. So like nearing the end when he is now confronted with an opportunity to actually like get his, at least a part of his revenge, not in his whole revenge. He literally, <laughs> what is this? Tol Tao Solarin, I think is his last name. It's, I know his first name is Tao. I don't want to mess this up. I'm pretty sure it's, well, let's go with it. Tao Solarin, I'm pretty sure. It's definitely Tao. He literally like goes, it's borderline verbatim an Inigo Montoya from Princess Bride situation where he's like, my name is Tao Solar and you killed my father, prepare to die. Like it's borderline literally that to the point where like I kind of laughed when we got there and I was just like, yep, that's, it's literally what this book is. And in Princess Bride, it's kind of a joke. Like it's sweet and endearing, but kind of a joke. When Inigo Montoya tells uh, the Dread Pirate, Wesley, his story that like, my father was killed and that like ever since then I spent every living, breathing moment of my day and of my, you know, every day and every week and every month and every year just training and training and training to be the best swordsman ever. So that if I ever meet the guy that killed my father, I'll be able to say, my name is Inigo Montoya, you killed my father, prepare to die. And like Inigo tells Wesley this in about one minute. But imagine taking that <laughs> and stretching it across 500 pages because that's what this book is it's taking inigo's that guy killed my father that does it i'm spending my whole life training to be the baddest motherfucker ever so that if i if and when i meet the guy who killed my father i can be like you killed my father prepared to die which is kind of ridiculous <laughs> like again in princess bride it's like 
Aw, Inigo. Because then he'll be like, yeah, but you know, there's not much money to be made in that. So like I started working for Vicini. And like, it's just like a throwaway. Like when you just like, Wesley's attitude towards Inigo is kind of just like, wow, it's like a little sad that you've spent the last like 20 years or whatever just training to fight the guy that killed your dad. Like, it's kind of sad. But that's what this book is. It's just like training and training and training and fighting and fighting and fighting and training and training and training and fighting and fighting and fighting to kill the guy that killed your dad. That's it. That's the whole thing. And that's why I feel so mixed about this. Because like the magic system and the world is pretty cool, is pretty unique, is pretty refreshing. And initially when it dumped me into the world, I was here for it. Because I didn't know the whole book would just be constantly visceral fighting. So the beginning when it just throws you into that visceral fight, I was like, oh. But then after a while, like it, you really get desensitized to it when it's just constantly that and you're like, eh, more fighting and more fighting and more fighting and and more fighting. There's like a sex scene with the love interest, which <laughs> it was so cringy because it just, I really feel like Evan Winter doesn't know how to write women. I It was so hard for me to read that. I was just like, what? <laughs> women don't act like that or want that or like it was it was like all from Tao's perspective. So when I was trying to think of like the headspace that the girl would have to be in to say that to do the things she's doing and say the things that she's saying to get them to the point where now they're going to like get it on. I was just like, have you thought about being in her head? Like does it, it doesn't make sense for her to to feel and do these things. It's like what Tao would wish and want her to be doing. If you it, it just it didn't read like a real person to me. It was just like wish fulfillment. It was it was pretty ugh. I could have done without that for sure. And the main character, he's not, like, I don't hate it. It'd be like hating Inigo. It's just, it's it's boring. It's really boring after a while. But that's all there is to it. I wanted more. I wanted more from the main character. And I wanted more of exploring the world. And the way that it ends, like, this book, I, as I don't really like Red Rising, the first book in the Red Rising saga, it's by far the weakest book. And that being said, dis despite how much I, I find the first Red Rising book quite boring, I will say this, that, that Darrow, because he's in a similar situation where he's, it's a revenge story, where he's coming to learn more about the world and politics uh, that he's now yeah, like thrown into because of this revenge story. And Darrow, for all his flaws, is a more complex character that is starting to pay attention to more things around him. He, like, in the beginning, it's all just about himself and his family, and, and after those are taken from him, then we're getting revenge. But even Darrow doesn't, like, the minute that he sees the guy that he holds responsible for the deaths of his loved ones, he doesn't instantly go, must kill! Like, even Darrow is still thinking about the long game and seeking the better opportunity and knows that there's more at play than just that that he'll get his moment and this is not that moment. And like, it's simply that. Like the fact that Tao is literally, literally in this book constantly like, if he sees the guy, must kill. <laughs> like it's, it's kind of nuts <laughs> and really kind of obnoxious. So I wanted to like it. In the beginning, I really did like it, but it really started to, to really get on my nerves. <laughs> That's why I was like, I guess three stars because it started out so strong and there's still so many things about it that I think are strong. Like I think Evan Winter, I think he's really good at writing combat. I really, really do. But he's overdone it. Like you don't use it sparingly. It, it doesn't, it no longer has an impact. It no longer packs a punch. If you're just constantly throwing that in there, like it, it needs to be, to be used sparingly and to greater effect. If we could spend more time getting to know the world and learning the politics and maybe refining our revenge plan and less time on the constant battling and training. The battling and training are well written. There's just way too much. Just way, 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 way too much. Didn't need it. Did not need it. It did not add to the story. It took away from it. So yeah, I just, yeah. <laughs> I think I'll pick up the second one. Um, The way that this one ended, at the same time, I'm like, I'm not hopeful because <laughs> part of me was like, well, maybe, you know, Tao will do some growing up and like get more complicated and more interesting in the next book. But the way that this ended, it, it, it gave me fresh annoyance for like for newly annoying things that I don't really want to say because I'd be really spoilery for how it ends. But there was a lot of things about the way that, that it ended that I did not care for. <laughs> there were fresh grievances. And then 
This is something that I actually saw someone else touch on and I don't know that I would have thought about it so actively if I hadn't seen them mention it. And then as soon as I heard them mention it, I started paying attention to that. And I was like, you're right. But the our main characters, people, they are sort of like the invaders and colonizers. And they are still actively fighting the sort of tribal people that originally inhabited the land that they invaded and now colonized. That is never addressed. <laughs> it is never addressed that we are, like our perspective is the side of the colonizer, which is odd in this day and age. Like if I was reading something that was written way back when from the perspective of like the British, I'd be like completely unsurprised that colonization is not addressed as the problematic thing that it is, but this was written now. Uh, so to have that in there so like unambiguously, like the beginning of the book takes you to the moment of colonization to make it very clear that that's what happened here is that these people are colonizers. <laughs> it's not something that like may or may not have happened in the history of this world, but is like way back when, like no, it is like, you get shown it happening in the beginning. And then as we go on, like I, it doesn't, like, I don't know if I was expecting it to be so much addressed, like as the person that I saw discussing it, like they were very upset that it wasn't very, very strongly addressed. I don't know that I ever expected it or wanted it necessarily to be completely like taken apart or addressed or, or anything like that, but a little, like something at least, like to begin, again, this is where I was missing some nuance in Tao's character for Tao to kind of start realizing things about his own world, to start having those doubts, not to come necessarily to any conclusions or to realize that, you know, he's actually on the wrong side and like completely to switch allegiances, like nothing like that. I don't expect it. I don't, I don't necessarily think that that would improve the story, but for him to start being more cognizant of the greater hierarchy at play, the political game at play, the fact that his little piece of it is a very small piece of it and that he needs to understand all of the pieces here if he actually wants to make a change for himself or his people or his caste, but at no point does that really ever happen. People around him keep being like, but don't you see there's more here? And he's just like, nope. <laughs> I'm like, all right, dude. All right, just get your revenge and then get the fuck out, I guess. Like, th again, there are people like that. It's not unbelievable that he would be that way. It's just really uninteresting to follow. So I would prefer a more nuanced, interesting intellectual character. Or if not, then I need multiple perspectives because if you're just gonna be this way, Again, like in Game of Thrones, there are characters that are really sort of narrow-minded or simple in their thinking or stubborn or whatever, but you have a variety to follow. So you don't just see everything through their eyes. So if it had been more perspectives, it might've benefited from that. But as it stands, this is a very flawed three stars. Like I, I would still, based on what I just said, like if that still appeals to you, like there's maybe read it. <laughs> Like, I wouldn't say, like, bump it up your TBR if you weren't planning on picking it up anytime soon, but, like, don't take it off your TBR. Like, it's it's got some good stuff in it. It's decently cobbled together. The magic is cool. I, I don't know. <laughs> nah. So let me know in the comments down below your thoughts and feelings about the various kinds of issues that I described having with this book overall in general, as they are in books in general. If you've read Rage of Dragons, let me know your thoughts specifically about Rage of Dragons. If you haven't read it but wanted to read it and now are are having second thoughts, <laughs> sorry, but you know, let me know. Uh, I post videos on Saturdays and also at other random uh, times, but definitely Saturdays. So like and subscribe and I'll see you when I see you.